President. I want to welcome all of you to our 2023 Veterans Day program to honor all of the brave men and women who have served and sacrificed so valiantly in our nation's military. Today, we pay honor for you, the commitment, heroism, and bravery you have all shown. We also honor all of those still listed as POW slash MIA and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice while in defense of our country. When Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner almost 200 years ago, he called America the land of the free and the home of the brave. Those words are as true today as they were then. Throughout this nation's history, American soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard men have bravely answered the call to defend our freedom, to aid our friends and allies, and to turn back aggressors. We can never fully repay our debt of gratitude to the nearly 1.2 million American service members who died in battle, or the over 1.4 million who are wounded. We can, however, recognize and thank the 25 million veterans still living today. These words are inscribed on the Korean War Memorial in Washington, D.C. Our nation honors her sons and daughters who answered the call to defend a country they never knew and a people they never met. Those words apply equally to many of our World War I, World War II, Vietnam War, and Gulf War veterans as well. They apply to today's active duty service members, tomorrow's veterans, who are helping to maintain peace throughout the world. Today, it is our privilege to say thank you to all of America's veterans, to let them know that we appreciate them for their service and honor them for their sacrifices. The price of freedom is high. We cannot afford to lose those who are willing to pay it. Today, we celebrate America's veterans for keeping this nation the land of the free and the home of the brave. At this time, I would like to introduce our MC for today's program. She is a 2018 Blaine High School graduate where she also played volleyball and golf. She received a bachelor's degree uh, reporter, or sorry, she received a bachelor's degree from University of North Dakota in 2020 and currently works as a morning news anchor for a reporter for Fox 9 News. Prior to joining Fox 9, she was a news anchor and reporter for W Day in Fargo, North Dakota, where she assisted her team in winning an Emmy Award in 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Saquon. Thank you, Isabel. And good morning, everybody. What a special day. And thank you for letting me be part of such a special program here at Blaine High School. Of course, we have a lot to get to. But first, as Isabel mentioned, I worked as a reporter and an anchor in Fargo for a few years. And you know, you'll probably hear this from every journalist you'll meet. I think the best part of what we get to do every single day is truly getting to connect with so many members of our community and getting to share those stories. And when you think about our community, so many different people make up our community, right? You, me, us, veterans. So during my time in Fargo, I got to work very closely with a lot of veterans, some of them being my very own colleagues. I also helped report on a story where a new Veterans Affairs Hospital opened up in Fargo, and that is so, so important for our war veterans and military personnel to get the help they need, whether it's medical care or maybe mental health help. Um, so for me to be part of this program is really surreal. I really thank you guys for letting me be part of this. Again, like Isabel mentioned, I was a 2018 graduate, so for me to be up here today is a great honor. As we begin the ceremony today, I want each and every single one of you to think about a veteran who you might know personally, and also think of our veterans who are here with us in this very gym. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. So to my left, you may notice the chair draped in a black cloth with the rose right at the front of the stage. This represents all of those still listed as POW MIA who could not be with us here today. At this time, we would like to present the branches of our nation's military, the Army, Coast Guard, Marine Corps, Air Force, and Navy. As we call out each branch, we invite everyone here to stand when the branch you served in is announced or if you have a family member who served or is currently serving. Again, please stand when their branch is called out. <laughs>
and gentlemen, please stand. At this time, we would like to present our nation's colors. Our flag today is being presented by veterans from Sergeant John Rice VFW Post 6316. Carrying in today's flag are Molly Quast. Molly joined the Army Reserve back in 2003 as a 31 Bravo military police officer. She was deployed in Iraq in 2006 in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Staff Sergeant Tim Quast. Tim joined in October of 2022, attended basic training at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and AIT for MOS 92Y at Fort Lee, Virginia. He served in the reserve for the 13th Psychological Operations Battalion in Arden Hills, Minnesota, as a supply specialist and supply sergeant for A Company. He was deployed to Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan in 2007 as an A Company Supply Sergeant for 12 months. After returning stateside, he reclassed to 37F as a Psychological Operations Specialist and was deployed again to Bagram Airfield in 2010. Throughout his career, he was awarded the Afghanistan Campaign Medal, Defense Meritorious Service Medal, Army Commendation Medal, and the Good Conduct Medal. E5 Joe Morse. Joe was an electronics technician second class. He served on the USS Okinawa doing primarily communications repairs and maintenance with some copier repair on the side. He was the only tech qualified to work on the ship's multiple copiers. The Okinawa was part of the faux amphibious landing the night and morning of Operation Desert Storm. Their amphibious readiness group had to get well within missile range to sell the idea that they were going to land on the shore to attack. Joe also served on the USS Anchorage as the lead petty officer for the electronics group. His last duty station was at a strategic communications unit based at Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma. There, he served as the leading petty officer for three stations and helped with the build and the design of a mobile communication setup, enabling the unit to move locations if need be. Lance Corporal Randy Monson served from 1971 to 1973. He was going to be drafted, but instead enlisted in the United States Marine Corps at 17 years old. Randy served seven months in Vietnam. He was an ammunition technician in the Explosive Ordnance Division. He's a Coon Rapids graduate and is married with a family of four. He is currently the commander of the Sergeant John Rice VFW. Ladies and gentlemen, our nation's colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we recite our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as the Blaine High School Concert Choir leads us in our national anthem.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated as we prepare for the official wreathling ceremony. During this ceremony, we will honor Blaine High School staff members who are veterans and also Blaine High School seniors who have enlisted in the United States military. Presenting the wreath for the United States Coast Guard, Lieutenant Commander Vern Bauer. Presenting the wreath for the United States Air Force, Lane High School English teacher and senior airman Ethan Scheibe. Mr. Scheibe began his service in 2020 and just returned back to Lane High School after being deployed to Air Base 101 in Nitro. Presenting the wreath for the United States Navy, Petty Officer Aviation Ordnanceman, Second Class Joe Prommel. Presenting the wreath for the United States Marine Corps, Private Carter Ritsanaya, accompanied by Blaine Senior Matthew Rakowitz and Blaine Technology Para Alan Klems. Mr. Klems served from 1996 to 2005 as a Sergeant E-5 and was a computer technician in the Marine Aircraft Wing, spending time in both Arizona and Japan. Presenting the wreath now for the United States Army, Staff Sergeant Ron Chasse. Presenting the wreath for the National Guard. Staff Sergeant Brad Christensen, accompanied by Blaine Senior, Jacob Walker Sandy. On behalf of the entire staff and student body, thank you for your service to our country. May we never forget all of those who serve to protect our nation and our liberty. A native of Olivia, Minnesota, Joe Kelly served 31 years in the United States Army and Army National Guard. He worked full time for the Minnesota National Guard for 25 years, including tours as Chief of Staff and Assistant Adjutant General. As an armor officer, he commanded troops at the company, battalion, and brigade levels. Joe served a combat tour in Iraq in 2004 and 2005. He retired from the military in April of 2021 as a Brigadier General. Joe then went to work for the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. 
In January of 2015, he was appointed as the state's director of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. He served in that role until he retired from public service this past January. Joe has been happily married to former Jean Detke of Blue Earth, Minnesota for 37 years. Jean is a registered nurse and works as the senior administrative director of the M Health Fairview Surgery and Procedure Center in Minneapolis. They have two grown daughters and a granddaughter. The Kellys make their home in Lindstrom, Minnesota. Ladies and gentlemen, Brigadier General Joe Kelly. Kind of a hard act to follow a newscaster or so. I'll do my best. Good morning, everyone. And, and thank you for the opportunity to be with you today as we honor the men and women who have served in our nation's military. I really enjoy coming to schools for Veterans Day because being with you students reminds me why we serve and what we must defend. Our country's future your futures. Veterans Day is a day we thank all those who served in the United States Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, Space Force, and Coast Guard, active duty, National Guard, and reserves. As long as there are wars and threats to our safety and security, we need people who are willing to join the military to stand between us and harm. People who will protect us, our way of life, and everything and everyone we hold dear. And that willingness to serve others is what makes veterans special. Last week, I had an appointment at our, our local clinic. And after I got checked in and my vital signs recorded, Vicki the nurse and I had a few minutes to chat before the doctor uh, joined us. And at some point, she just rather offhandedly mentioned that she had served in the Air National Guard back in the 1970s. Now, Vicki, who's about the same age as my oldest sister, also very proudly self-identified as a little Italian grandmother, which was a lot more obvious to me than her status as an Air Force veteran. But as I drove home, I was once again struck by the notion you just can't tell who they are. If veterans aren't wearing the uniform of their service or of a veterans organization or some gear that indicates what war they served in or what service they retired from, you probably won't be able to tell that they're a veteran just by looking at them. It happened again three days later back at the clinic for one more follow-up. Don't worry, everything's fine. The medical tech, Rachel, uh, looked at my shot record and she noticed that I'd been vaccinated against anthrax. She's like, so uh, why is that? And I said, well, the Army thought it was a good idea that I get that shot before I went to Iraq. And she smiled and said, me too. Rachel had uh, served on active duty in the Army for four years, joining shortly after 9-11. She wasn't a medic back then, but a maintenance supply clerk who ordered repair parts for military vehicles and equipment. She had deployed to both Afghanistan and Iraq. You just can't tell who they are. You can't tell who our veterans are by looking at them, because quite frankly, we're regular people. Well, not entirely. There are, as we heard earlier, about 25 million living veterans in the United States. So we kind of we kind of blend in. But veterans are indeed ordinary Americans, but they have done something extraordinary. Something that 95% of our fellow citizens cannot, have not, or will not do and that's serve in the armed forces. That said, veterans aren't superheroes or action figures. Now, some are genuine heroes that have done incredibly brave and heroic things in combat. And some have suffered serious physical 
psychological and emotional wounds. But most of us are regular people. As an example, let me tell you about one of my favorite veterans, my dear departed father-in-law. Ray was born and raised on a farm in far northwestern North Dakota during the Depression and the Dust Bowl years. Upon graduating from high school in the middle of World War II, he immediately joined the United States Navy. The Navy recognized Ray as a pretty smart kid, so they started training him on some of the most up-to-date technology of the day, something called radio detection and ranging, or as we all know today, radar. Ray deployed in both the Atlantic and Pacific theaters. When the war ended, he returned home and went to work for John Deere as a regional sales rep in North Dakota and Montana. He later bought into a farm machinery business down in southern Minnesota that he owned and operated for 40 years. He fell in love, got married, and helped raise three, kill three children, including my wife, Jean. Ray also served on the boards of the local bank and the community hospital. He was very proud of his service in the Navy, but he never made a big deal of it. Ray was a veteran who kept on serving long after he took the uniform off. And I could tell stories of veterans I know and love all day, including my dad, my uncles, my brother, my daughter, and countless friends. But I think you get the point. And by the way, they're all a lot like Ray. You can't tell who they are. In the professions of arms, each service has established values, ethics, and codes of conduct. And each branch has something that sounds very much like the Army's value of selfless service, which is simply defined as putting the needs of others ahead of your own. Well, veterans certainly place the needs of others before theirs when they put the uniform on. And in many cases, like Ray, they continue to do that for the rest of their lives. So on Veterans Day, we gather, just like we're doing this morning, to remember, honor, and thank our veterans for their service and the enduring gifts they have given us. But we don't serve alone. This coming Sunday, Gene and I will be at U.S. Bank Stadium for the Vikings salute to service game against the New Orleans Saints. If you're a football fan, that game got a whole lot interesting last week. Sometime before kickoff, the public address announcer will ask all military veterans to stand up so the crowd can show appreciation. As I rise, I will place my hand on my wife's shoulder to recognize and thank her for serving right alongside me for more than 30 years in the Army. You students are all at or near the age of military service. And a few of you, and some of your classmates already have, you will decide to, to serve in uniform. And there is great importance, honor, and satisfaction in being a soldier, sailor, Marine, Airman, Guardian, and Coast Guardsman. If you decide to join one of our armed forces, you will be welcomed into the ranks and you will do something important for the common good. However, most of you won't have the military vocation and that's just fine. If you don't, my question for you is, what will your act of selfless service be? Will you pursue a career in government? Will you teach or coach? Will you be a member of an organization that cares for the elderly, the poor, or the disadvantaged? Will you be a volunteer firefighter or a paramedic? Will you go into law enforcement or some other criminal justice career? Will you seek public office? Will you work for a socially responsible business that gives back to the community? Will you be a good neighbor? There are many ways to serve. And my challenge to you is to find a way 
that puts the needs of others ahead of your own at least some of the time. If you do, you will honor the service and sacrifices of generations of veterans, and you will pay back, more importantly, pay forward those veterans that gave us the good fortunes that we enjoy today and the opportunities we hope to have tomorrow. So today and every other day, let's give thanks to our veterans and what they be grateful for what they have given us. And let's be hopeful that you will all step forward and give of yourselves in some form of selfless service so that we may continue to have the blessings of this great nation these United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, General Kelly. I think there were some powerful takeaways from that. I would now like to draw your attention to the flagpole in the center of the gym. Lowering our flag to half-staff is United States Marine Corps veteran Corporal Dennis, Dennis Angel. Dennis served as a forward observer for 81 millimeter mortars the last two years of Vietnam in five Far East countries from 1973 to 1975. He's currently on the Veterans of Anoka County Chapter 470 Honor Guard Rifle Squad. Ladies and gentlemen, we would now like to pay tribute and honor those service members who have made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of this country with our battlefield cross ceremony. When the music for the ceremony has concluded, members of the Kraus Hardig Sergeant John Rice Final Salute Honor Guard Rifle Squad will be positioned at the southeast corner of the gym and they will fire three rifle volleys. I want to prepare everyone for these. They're going to be loud. Please remain silent.
At this time, we will now retire the colors. I think as we end this program today, I just want everyone to remember what I said right at the beginning of the ceremony. Remember when I said, think about the veterans you know personally and think about the veterans who are here today. There are so many big takeaways from what just happened. And as you go about your classes today, as you go about your weekend plans, I want you to think about that. Today isn't the only day we honor our veterans, right? And not just tomorrow either. We should be thinking about the sacrifices they make for our country every single day moving forward. These people are heroes. These people serve our country and fight for the freedom. These people are our veterans, and I think we need to take that into consideration. Not just today, not just tomorrow, but every day. Thank you for coming out and for being here and for letting me be part of this program. And thank you to Anoka Hennepin Schools for making sure that we do take time out of our day to recognize our veterans and to take this time to pay tribute to them. Thank you so much. Veterans here today, please stick around for a photo. We're gonna meet in the South Bleachers at the end of this program. Thank you so much for being here. Students are dismissed to fourth period. Thank you.